All right, now one thing about this, this is low voltage, so this is okay. Um, if it was higher voltage, like 12 gauge wire or something like that, you do not use, <laughs> you do not use, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Lily, what are you doing? I gotta get her. What's up everybody? Today we're gonna be installing a garage door opener, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So I have a garage door opener on the door, but generally there is by the entryway some type of button to push that controls the light and the lock like so. And uh, I don't have that. So I ordered this LiftMaster off of Amazon and we're going to install that today. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. It's quite simple, uh, but there are a few little tips and tricks you might want to know. So first off, you want to take a good look at the type of unit that you have. So some units have different mechanisms going on here and different connections. Uh, mine, I have this antenna. Everybody's going to have their antenna sometimes on the side and, you know, whatever. But you're going to have your antenna. This is for the push button. Obviously, that's the thing we're installing. Uh, but it's also going to need power as well. It's going to need the control and power. So this will be the control this common should be the power and then this beam. And that beam is for that little part down there by the door that acts as a motion sensor. So if something is in the way, it'll send the door back up. So we're going to go ahead and do it the same way too. No fancy connectors. We're going to twist those wires around that terminal and screw it down. Now, the first thing you want to do is obviously unplug it. The next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have all of your materials now this doesn't come with wire like i originally thought it would uh so fortunately i had some bell wire and that's all you need it's just some uh 20 gauge or 22 gauge uh bell wire and we're going to run this up and over to that now in order to get it nice and neat up against the wall here you're going to need some staples if you don't have any staples at all i recommend getting some insulated staples for the job they're not expensive we're talking about literally a few dollars um, from home depot or whatever or even amazon but i have some staples and i'm going to use metal staples i'm going to show you how you can use those you just need to be careful that you don't dry the staple through the wire and cause a short you have to cut that out and then rewire and redo it but i'm going to show you how to do it because i'm not spending no unnecessary money but the first thing we need to do is get some cut off a small piece and test and make sure that this button actually works all right so first things first i'm going to tell you to pop this thing off okay the easiest way to do is to turn around the back and just pop off the little pieces of the, uh, push in the little tabs and pop it off you're going to need to pop it off so that you can screw a screw in to uh, mount it to the wall and this is the actual button here all right so uh now these are our connections you're going to have the red the white and then you read your instructions, which are here. are going to tell you which one to connect to uh, which terminal on the box. So as you can see, I don't have this quick connect terminal on mine. I'm more of a figure two person here. Uh, and I have three terminals that remember that push button, then the common, and then the beam. So I'm going to connect the wires here, like I said before, to the push button, and then to the common, and then it's going to go to here and it'll tell us which one to connect to which all right so i kind of started a little bit all i did was just cut this off uh we don't need a, a long piece we're not trying to do all that we just want to make sure we get something to test and now we're going to go ahead and take our wire strippers here and then boom ugh. and then i'm all out of shot sorry about that and then uh, boom okay now all right now let's get our screwdriver all right i'm gonna take this now and screw it just a tad bit and screw it just a tad bit i'm gonna wrap them around light goes there i'm gonna do this off camera because it's hard to reach around the camera now, before I do the, the red one, I wanted to show you guys. You see how 
the wire is going this way because that's the way you turn it. If I did it that way, when I tighten it up, it might loosen it up and you get a less secure connection. Now, I have a lot of wire. I don't plan on running out anytime soon, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just toss this wire. Oop, get around that terminal. But uh, I could just get some electrical tape, twist these together and just run the rest of the way, which I mean, I suppose I could. If I was tight on wire and didn't want to waste, that's what I'd do. And I'm, I still might do it because it wouldn't take nothing to twist these together, electrical tape it, and boom, there you go. So, all right, so now this is done. Let's go ahead and get up on a ladder, and I'm going to do the same thing up there, which I, I can't film because it's just me. All right, so we got it wired up. It's not super cute or anything, but I, that wasn't the goal. It's just to test it. Everything is secure. We're going to plug it up. We have power, so let's go. Oh, it's even lit up, so we have power. So let's go ahead and test it. Look, she, Lily, Lily, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna close the door. One, two, go. All right, one, two, why am I still counting? Let's go. It did something, it made a noise. There we go, it works. She works. Let's go ahead and now unplug this. Ugh. Get, get, come, come on. Why are you so, okay, there we go. All right, so now what we need to do is just simply extend the wire and mount the thing to where we want to mount it. And that's, that's actually the hardest part, really. The next thing we have to do is test our stapler. All right, I'm gonna use this, okay? You probably might not want to do this, but I'm going to use this and I'm just going to see if I could shoot it in there at a really low, shallow depth. It's a little droopy right there, but that's that's okay. Uh, you don't want it like hanging low, low. But because I'm using metal staples, I don't want to hammer it in too much. I don't want to puncture anything or pinch a wire. But here we are. So now I'm about to mount the push button here. Um, what I recommend you do if you have no idea if it's studs or anything like that behind it. This is a garage, so I don't really don't care. But get a small bit and just drill deep and if it you know hollows out and, and bottoms out then you know okay well it's just drywall here and now you can go get your wall anchor and get your bigger bit so that's what i'm about to do now just drill the bigger holes put the wall anchors in there and then secure the thing to the wall now usually i would use i usually grab my m12 stuff because i leave that line around all this stuff is in their cases and stuff but uh i want to say uh I can't remember how the M12 really works, but it's a much different experience with the Metabo because when you put the bit in, it locks. Okay, you see it's kind of wiggly right now, but it is very secure. It locks into place. Let me show you something. My old DeWalt wouldn't do this. See, it's not. All right, now it's loose. Okay, but when I tighten it up, it does this. You hear that grip? My DeWalt didn't do that. I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, 
As far as I know, I don't recall that feeling on the Milwaukee either, but the Metabo does it, and uh, yeah, I like it. But on the side note, these are some really big two and a half amp hour batteries. Now, one thing about this, this is low voltage, so this is okay. Um, if it was higher voltage, like 12 gauge wire or something like that, you do not use, <laughs> you do not use, oh my gosh, what is she doing? Lily, what are you doing? I gotta get her. Goodness gracious, I don't even remember what I was saying, goodness. But, but this is lower voltage, so it's okay. But even with this, I usually like to wrap the wire while it's some slack. I didn't think about that. What I really should have done was loosen this up after I saw, made the little twisties, unscrew this again, I loosened it from the terminal in the back, and then wrapped them with the, while it was still in the spool, because you get a really tight wrap then. But I mean, I've been doing this for a while, so I could still get a pretty tight wrap with that. And again, like I said, it's low voltage. So now it's time to test. The light is on, we have power. Let's see if she works. Light came on. Boom, there it is. Did she work? She works. Let's test the light fu function. Oh, well, that's not working. When I do this, light don't turn off and on. Okay, what about lock? Nope. Oh well, so I just have this. The light function would have been great, but I have this automatic light. See, so it just turned on, that comes on when you walk in, so that's fine. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful and I'll see you guys next video.